Okay, now we're getting the picture of it. We're seeing Trump and Kim Jong Un coming down to the oh, land border. Oh, there we see it. The historic, the colossal, phenomenal encounter between North Korean leader Kim Jong Un and U.S. President Trump. This comes amid uh, U.S. President Trump's second state visit to South Korea. <laughs> Now they have, they are not, they have now walked across the military demarcation line over to the oh, North Korean side. Right. Okay. Right. And this is historic as it marks the first time ever for a U.S. president to step on North Korean soil. Yes, that was a very historic moment, as noted by that South Korean reporter from uh, Air Rang News of South Korea. I'm going to have a link, by the way, to Air Rang News. So if you want the best coverage of what's going on in South Korea, it's in English, check it out. Anyway, uh, but you know who wasn't so impressed by it? Yeah, the usual suspects, U.S. news media, or a lot, the liberal news media. And one of those that wasn't all that impressed, or actually acted like he wasn't all that impressed, was Richard Engel of NBC News. Well, I think this is absolutely designed to be in the history books, and President Trump kept referring to that. Uh, the question is, is he rewriting history right now? And there are certain aspects of his visit in which he does absolutely appear to be rewriting history. Uh, he talked repeatedly how before he came, became president, the relations between North and uh, South Korea were incredibly tense, that they were on the brink of war, but that it was only through his election, his arrival, and his special bond and friendship that he delivered, a bond and friendship which was clearly on display uh, today with the, uh, the, the chairman of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, that uh, President Trump saying without that bond and friendship, things would have been worse, potentially even have led to war. The reality is uh, the tensions between North and South Korea dramatically spiked after President Trump got elected. There was tremendous rhetoric and insults with President Trump calling the North Korean leader the same person he is embracing right now as a friend uh, before he was calling him Little Rocket Man. Uh, North Korea was exploding nuclear weapons inside of its mountains. People in South Korea thought that the two countries were on the brink of war. So there is an aspect where President Trump is now congratulating himself for easing tensions that he also helped create. But it is still a, a historic moment. It had not been done before, and it will be, he will go down in history as the first U.S. president to cross into North Korea. But what is still being written is the why. Why did he do it? Did he do it in order to rewrite history and paint himself as a, as a deal maker, as a peacemaker? Is he trying to distract? Uh, or is he trying to restart negotiations? This is the third. Why angle? Notice how uh, Richard Engel had to uh, work in that uh, uh, Trump self-glorification angle into his story. Yeah, that's Engel's angle. Went in terms of sheer performance, this may have been uh, Trump's biggest as president. Keep in mind, uh, North Korea is known as the Hermit Kingdom. North Korean leaders are famously reclusive. The idea of setting up something impromptu is really unheard of, especially in this dramatic fashion on the border. Uh, but as I mentioned, the North Korean nuclear program is fully in place. Uh, there has not been any progress towards even an agreement to begin scaling it back. So the big question now is whether all of this symbolism, this big dramatic uh, gamble that the president has made, uh, succeeding at least in a diplomatic way initially more than his, uh, where his predecessors failed, whether or not it would lead to some kind of agreement to actually end that nuclear program. The important question, John Carl and so Thanks, John, for noting that all of Trump's predecessors failed as far as uh, lowering the tensions on a Korean peninsula. Now, you might call it uh, symbolism, but would you want to go back to, uh, like, how tense it was during, say, the Obama years? Okay, after a few hours of initial grumbling about the uh, Trump-Kim meeting at the DMC in Korea, 
the uh, mainstream media sort of had a chance to come up with their uh, their big talking point. It's a photo op. All it is is just a photo op, folks. Watch as uh, George Stephanopoulos, former Clinton flunky, promotes that uh, photo op angle. Is just restarting the talks a win? I don't know about win or lose, but what we do know is, as John just pointed out, this was the dramatic headline, the dramatic photo that President Trump wanted. He's a great showman. He pulled it off today. There's just no question about that. But when you're, when you're looking, first of all, politically and then substantially, politically, you know, the president had a, uh, it seemed like at first a successful meeting in Singapore with Kim Jong-un just about a year ago. That didn't seem to change his approval ratings one way or another. Finally, we have Morning Joe's Willie Geist and Chuck Todd hyping that uh, photo op shtick. Is there a plan here from the Trump administration as far as you can see, or was this just that, a photo op? Well, we're going to find out. The last two felt, but the last two ended up looking as if they were photo ops in the end. We thought they could lead to something, but they didn't. The first one, having the summit gave the president a boost that he had never gotten before. The highest job approval rating we ever recorded for the president came after that first meeting with Kim Jong-un. And I think in some ways, Willie, the president keeps trying to recapture that moment, uh, recapture, you know, with, with some other uh, replacement shiny moment. Well, it seems like they might have found their talking point that this was all just a, some big photo op. We'll see. And I'll tell you what, if I find more examples of uh, mainstream media hyping photo op. You better believe I'll present it to you. So see you guys later.